Mr. Speaker, I grant myself such time as I may consume. Gentleman is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I rise today in opposition to this foolhardy attempt to pass for a second time one of the most draconian immigration bills this Congress has ever seen. This rehashing of H.R. 2 is a joke. They say that the definition of insanity is trying something over and over, but expecting different results. Yet here we are, here we are debating a bill once again that continues to have no chance of being enacted into law. We know that because H.R. 2 has been brought up and failed twice in the Senate, most recently garnering a mere 32 votes. This is nothing more than pure political theater. I truly don't know what it is that the Speaker wants us to suspend, the rules of the House or our disbelief. My Republican colleagues continue to show us that they are not, serious, that they are not interested in finding real solutions to tough issues. Let's be very clear about what this legislation would do. This, ba this bill serves as a wholesale ban on asylum and the end of parole. No one would be able to seek asylum in the United States if they crossed between ports of entry, or if they had or could have had even temporary status in a third country. The last time we considered this bill, Democrats offered a variety of amendments to exempt the most vulnerable from some of th these requirements. This included those fleeing communist and totalitarian regimes and unaccompanied children. The majority was not willing to exempt children under a year old. When it comes to parole, Republicans were not willing to support codifying the vital U Uniting for U Ukraine parole program, which has aided over 100,000 Ukrainians fleeing, fleeing Putin's unlawful invasion of Ukraine. This is not serious legislation. Given their slim margins, it is unclear that Republicans could even pass H.R. 2 in its entirety today. As such, the majority had to make some tweaks to the bill to try to convince any Republican holdouts that their marquee bill is a good idea. For example, this version removes H.R. 2's nationwide e-verify mandate. If passed into law, this would have decimated our economy, especially our agriculture sector. Some Republicans previously voted no because of this provision. But, re but removing this title appears to be doing little for the bill's prospects. Other Republicans, including the chairman of the Immigration Subcommittee, support this provision and have expressed concern over its removal. This whole exercise is, hu is a huge waste of our time. Not only does this bill not have the votes in the Senate, it probably does not even have the votes to pass the House today. In what appears to be an effort to gain the support of Mr. Roy, an early opponent of the Speaker's approach to the foreign aid package, the E-Verify section was replaced with a new grant program to reimburse states for, quote, enforcing immigration law, unquote. This is intended to reimburse the state of Texas for the money Governor Greg Abbott has spent defying our federal system with Operation Lone Star, even though numerous components of this operation have been ruled unlawful by the courts. If the hope was that this provision would earn the support of Mr. Roy, it seems to have failed, since we are only considering this bill under suspension because he and others wouldn't even support moving this bill out of the Rules Committee. So not only is this not serious legislation, this is not a serious process. And let's remember how we got here. After passing H.R. 2 in May of last year, Republicans spent the next seven months saying that H.R. 2 was the only way to secure the border, even though they know that it cannot become law, having been so overwhelmingly rejected by the Senate. <coughs> then they insisted that the price of helping protect Ukraine against Russian aggression was enacting harsh border enforcement legislation. Senate Republicans even managed to convince some Democrats to agree to a border bill in the Senate a bill that Minority Leader McConnell called the toughest border bill in 30 years. But Republicans could not take yes for an answer. Donald Trump said that he didn't want to do anything that might help at the border in an election year because he wants immigration as a campaign issue. Other Republicans said it out loud too, saying they don't want to, quote, do too damn much to help a Democrat, close quote. Folding to the cult of Donald Trump, and just hours after the 370-page text of this bill was released, 
Speaker Johnson declared the bill dead on arrival in the Senate, and that bill was released. Speaker Johnson declared the bill dead on arrival in the House, with the rest of the Republican conference quickly falling in line. Republicans showed clearly what Democrats have been saying over and over again, that they don't want to do anything that would help address our broken immigration system. They just want to talk tough without doing the hard work of actually legislating. Now, this version of H.R. 2 is being sent to the floor to give Republicans cover to vote for necessary aid for our allies, Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan. If this political theater and show vote and show vote of this bill is what they need to pass vital aid to Ukraine, Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan, then fine. But let's not pretend we're accomplishing anything here today. This is a waste of our time. I reserve the balance of my time.